this, this is insane, Anne exclaimed in shock as Ron finished his long story of what he had just experienced in his own mind. Apollyon, Wayne muttered softly, if that's really Fingna who is speaking to you, this may be far serious than I thought. I have no doubt who he was, Ron said confidently. The only true demon that should create something as evil as the Red Rage in Yono. That's the whole story he told you, about that ninja named Kiro, Kim paused fearfully. Ron, are you saying you control yourself now? Is this Apollyon gone? No, he's definitely still in my mind. I can still feel his presence deep inside me, but I've managed to shut him up for now, Ron said, shaking his head. I have a feeling I won't be seeing the last of him, though. Apollyon has been manipulating my mind ever since I first tapped into the Red Rage back in the abandoned train yard several days ago, and I'm pretty sure he's behind the zombie illusion in Japan as well. So scary, Rufus said, remembering how bad Ron had lost his mind. This seems far more serious than it is, Kim, Anne said fearfully. If anything Ron is saying is true, we best keep a closer eye on him. If he loses control of his red rage again, he could be placing this entire hospital in danger. You don't have to worry, Miss Possible, Ron assured her. I've got it under control now. That does not mean you're safe forever, Kim cut in. What if this red rage really tries taking a control of you again? You may have shut a Apollyon for now out of your mind, but that dark energy source he created is still inside you. It's like you told us. Apollyon said that with anyone with mystical monkey powers that taps into the Red Rage will be bound to it forever, no matter how hard they try and hold it back or ignore it. I know, Kim, what he said, Ron said fear harshly. I can't deny that being a possibility, so I'll need to find a way to maybe learn to control it, or at least find a way to prevent the Red Rage from taking control out of my mind again. But how? Wade asked him. I don't know yet. Ron said in a tone of defeat. Master Sensei and Yori are dead, so I don't know how to do it. That may pose a problem then, Kim said. If you don't find a way to control this dark energy force inside you, then... She paused, not wanting to know the horrifying result would be if Ron all lost control of the Red Rage. Rufus just remembered his nightmare where Ron had destroyed a city and killed dozens of people. Then he wondered that maybe that might have been the vision was yet to come. Anne and Wade also looked just as worried as Kim was, fearing that Ron may have become all lost out of control. I'll figure something out, Kim. I always do, Ron said, smiling with confidence. I hope you do, Kim replied. Then Wade told me about everything that happened in Japan, and I was beyond worried. I know, I know, Ron said sadly. You're right, Kim. Yori wasn't there. No one was still there. It was all just burnt ground, ashes, rubble, and human skeletons. Everyone looked visibly shocked and saddened by this. They couldn't even imagine what Ron must have gone through over there. Don't think about that now, Anne said. It will just stress you out even more. It may make you lose control again. Ron had to agree with Anne. If he allowed his negative emotions to grow too strong, Ron feared that the Red Rage may take control of him again. He wouldn't let that happen. Ron had promised that Apollyon that he'd prove his mind was even stronger than he thought. He couldn't do that, even if he just swallowed load and allowed sorrow and grief and the loss of Sensei of Yori to take over. You're right, Anne, Ron added. I gotta move on from this. It's what Sensei and Yori would have wanted me to do. Anne smiled proudly at Ron. That's the spirit, she said. Other than the wound on your chest, you should be good to go. That's a relief, Ron said. Then he turned to Wade. Did you find anything on the dark web regarding that case Dr. Director gave us? Oh yeah, about that, Wade paused briefly. I did a lot of digging, but I didn't find much. However, I did find something really messed up regarding it. Yeah, and what is it? Ron asked curiously. It was what appeared to be records of Ridley's criminal history file containing information regarding his family, but I don't think I could actually call them family given how sinister and evil they were, Wade answered, sounding slightly disturbed. Finally, Ron said in relief, now we're getting somewhere. Mind if I check it out? Well, you can, but just a bit of a warning. Kim and Betty Director already saw it all, and it's incredibly messed up and disturbing, Wade warned him. It's true, Ron, 
Kim said. I actually couldn't finish most of it due to how sick it was, but Dr. Director told me the rest. Wade can send it to you on your laptop back at your place, and also on the communicator. I think I can handle it, Ron assured them. Can't be much worse than what happened in Japan. A male nurse suddenly stuck his head into the room calling for Anne. She glanced back at him, who he heard what to say, then turned to Kim, Wade, Ron, and Rufus. Well, I gotta head over to the surgery room now. They just brought someone in who was driving drunk and hit a parked truck. And from what the nurse said, it wasn't going to be pretty. And informed them grimly. Oh boy, Wade said. Well, don't we won't want to keep you, you waiting. Well then, Anne replied, opening the door. I best be off now. And then quickly rushed out of the door and closed it behind her, leaving Ron, Kim, Wade, and Rufus alone. So Wade, you think you could send me what you found on the communicator and my laptop? Ron asked. Actually, I already did that, Wade replied. It should be there waiting for you. Ah, good, Ron replied. I'll be sure to read all of that once we're out of the hospital. Ron sat on his bed with his laptop open, reading the evidence that Wade had found on the dark web regarding Ridley. It was truly disturbing, as Wade had said. It had been about an hour since Ron had checked out of the hospital, and he had learned a lots of bad things about Ridley then. And the first set of files he, they have received were per police records of Ridley's criminal history. And Ron couldn't hardly believe how long Ridley's rap sheet actually was. He had committed over the last uh, over 100 crimes since he was 13 years old. And they were not all pretty crimes like robbings, gas stations, or breaking into random houses. Ridley had committed countless hideous acts of murder, torture, assault, and to Ron's horror... He counts 12 counts of infestiate as well. Ridley was also charged in the past for drug trafficking, human trafficking, and even disturbing being content. This wasn't the worst part of it, though. It was the second set of files that Ron, Ron read that he could find even more horrible, but slightly saddening at the same time. The files were from a mental hospital for the criminally insane documenting a review that one of the doctors had with Ridley about nine years ago. It was basically a past of his, his story as a child and was probably the most horrifying and messed up story Ron had ever read in his life. But from what he gathered regarding it, Ridley's father and mother had not actually been married to each other. No, Ridley's mother, Sarah Farkas, had been abducted by an extremely dangerous, bloodthirsty biker gang boss named Gerald Farkas when he was only 15 years old in the year 1974 and held as a prisoner in his home. There she was kept chained up in the basement for his slave and forced to either submit to the Gerald's will or face a slow and agonizing death. From what Ridley described to the doctor from the story of his evil father I told him, escape was absolutely impossible. Gerald's mansion was armed with guards all around the property and security cameras in every single house including the bathrooms. There were also cameras outside of the house as well, as well as motion sensor alarms on every door and window of the house that would trigger if someone were to tamper with them. This made the escape pretty much impossible for Sarah, and as Gerald warned her that if she ever tried escaping even once, or if she even disobeyed an order from him, um, Gerald would punish her in ways that had not be seen since the Dark Ages. In addition to that, Gerald stated that he would have his gang simultaneously murder her entire family, including her relatives and whatever friends she had so close given to dare to resist him or escape. What was even worse is that Gerald and his gang had even had the police working for him, which is why his crimes had gone unpunished for so long, which also meant Sarah wouldn't have no chance of freedom. The police would simply track her and her family down, kill Sarah's family, and bring her back to the captors or possibly have them frame the crimes they didn't commit, which would result in much worse fates. For one almost a whole year, Gerald and his men did some of the most worst imaginable things to the poor girl, and Ridley seemed to have a thing going on for extremely graphic details. Because of what Ron read him made him physically sick, Gerald would violate Ridley's mother almost every day, and he would have a gun gun trained on her to ensure she didn't resist and that wasn't even the worst of all if sarah failed to service him exactly the way he wanted he would have his men torture her with various torture weapons 
until she submitted to their will. Eventually, Sarah was tortured so badly in exchange that she lost all hope and fully gave in to the demands of her captors to save her family and her own life. Ron felt a deep, deep sense of sorrow for this young woman and didn't even begin to imagine what had she gone through while she was locked up in that hellhole of prison. However, the worst part was yet to come. About four months into her captivity, Sarah eventually got pregnant with Gerald's child due to constantly being violated almost nonstop as a child and this child was none other than Ridley Farkas. At some point after finding out she was pregnant, Sarah managed to get out of the change and escape after a power outage occurred from the heavy rainstorm. Since it was nightfall, Sarah managed to sneak past the guards and attempt to find help. She eventually found a cop car patrolling the area near a gas station and begged them for help. The officers listened to Sarah's story and promised to take her home. But what she didn't know what she was walked into was a trap. She didn't even know she was and begged them for help until the two of them pulled their guns and forced Sarah into the cop car. They then revealed to Sarah that they were proud members of Gerald's gang and they were also very angry that she dared to escape from them. The second cop then drugged Sarah and took her back to Gerald's mansion where he later punished her in the most brutal way imaginable. Gerald and his gang chained her up to a metal board and hacked off both her legs with a chainsaw to ensure that she never ran away from them again. But that wasn't the tip of the iceberg. Later on, Gerald and his gang had returned to the basement of the mansion with a bowl lap sack in his hand and dumped the contents of it in front of Sarah, who had already given hope at this point. What she saw out of that sack completely broke her mind and spirit. It was the severed heads of Sarah's parents, two young brothers, and her aunt and uncle. At this point, Sarah became violent with rage and attempted to jack attack Gerald, but he knocked her out with a wooden club and chained her back up. Upon learning that Sarah was pregnant, Gerald decided to keep the child for himself in hopes of one day raising him in, the, in ways of his gang. As for Sarah, well, he allowed her to live in under order to help take care of his future child, but she was never allowed out of the basement unless she had to use the restroom. And whenever Sarah needed to, the guards would drag her there by the chain since she no longer had legs. Ron was already at the verge of being sick. After reading more horrible things, Ridley had accounted the doctor about that his mother were treated by his criminals and father, but it only got worse from there. Gerald had refused to let Sarah give birth in the hospital, since he knew that she would reveal that he was keeping her as prisoner, and she was forced to give birth to Ridley in the basement. Ridley didn't mention much about what happened after his mother gave birth to him, but what he did mention was that once he was five years old, Gerald and his men and his mom and his mother had sold his mother to a bloodthirsty crime boss who secretly made made really messed up films within the criminal underworld. The reason was for this is because Gerald saw no further use for Sarah, and so he became lost interest in her. Once Ridley's mother was gone, his life took a turn for the absolute worse. Ridley's father and his gang members would be torture and bully him every time he failed to fulfill their evil demands. Gerald had made it clear to Ridley how many times that failure was not an option and that he and or his guards would accompany him. Due to the fears of being investigated by law enforcement, Gerald refused to let Ridley even attend school as he was worried that he might try and escape his custody. Ridley was in use in one sole purpose and that was to assist Gerald and his gang for various heists and even hitmen missions. Ridley even mentioned in the report that would be a mission forced by Gerald and his man to rob, try and rob rival gangs and loot their illegal items such as drugs, messed up films, money, and even really messed up porn, if they even had any. The first only had been six years old when Gerald sent him out to do it. And what's even worse was that if Ridley failed to accomplish his missions, his father and the rest of the gang would beat and torture Ridley in horrible ways. And there was even one time where two of the gang members violated Ridley and forced him to pleasure them at gunpoint point in a really messed up way. His father had no problem allowing it either, even going so far as to punish Ridley by beating him with the barbed wire whip if he failed to pleasure his man properly. Ridley was in hell, and his father was pretty much the devil who tortured him simply for his own sadistic pleasures. 
Ron felt absolutely disgusted at what he was reading. This poor child had been robbed out of his mother, tortured by his gangster of a father who for not following his orders, and even forced to commit a crime such as a young age. Ron honestly couldn't help but actually feel slightly sorry for Ridley, but he was rather quick to remind himself that Ridley was not someone he should be sympathizing over. This was the same person that would later go on to commit one of the worst crimes Ron had ever read about. And not to mention that Ridley would one day bomb Japan with a nuclear missile and destroying the free regions and killing millions. Yes. Because of this, Ron had to make sure to not let his guard down when it came to dealing with someone like Ridley. By the time Ridley had turned 10, he had finally had enough of, of his father and his gang members always torturing him and using them for a tool for, for his personal gain. So he planned to escape only in the one way he knew. Ridley had knew a few, learned a few new skills from his father and his gain over the years. One of them was picking locks and disabling the security systems. Late at night after Gerald and his gang members went to sleep, Ridley had managed to tamper with the motion sensors, alarms, and security cameras in the basement with a few new systems. But however, with the tools disabling them and allowing him to sneak out afterwards, words, Ridley had entered his father's room with a cyptomonic needle filled with kerosene, then injected into his neck. This caused Gerald to die slow and painful death. As for the rest of the gang, Ridley had killed him in a massive explosion created by a homemade bomb that he had found underneath Gerald's bed. Ridley set the barn off to go bomb to go off in four minutes. He fled the house to be safe, if despite it going off sensor, sensor motion alarms. By the Gerald's other game members discovered that Ridley was gone and their leader was dead. It was already too late for them. The bomb exploded, destroying the entire house, killing the rest of the gang, allowing Ridley to finally have the freedom that he so long desired. This was when their doctor's report officially ended, so Ron didn't even know what happened to Ridley afterwards. But from what Ron seen in the criminal record history, however, he had already committed his first real crime when he was 13 years old. And living with the host family, Ridley had assaulted the daughter of the host family and ended up in jail for six months. But it didn't stop there, however. A year later, Ridley was caught dealing drugs in an alleyway off by two duty cops and arrested him, then sent to a correctional facility for 12 months. It wasn't until Ridley neared his early 20s that he really started taking things to the next level. At age 18, 17, Ridley organized his own criminal gang that would later grow to become the Black Shadow, then started his business as the criminal underworld, as mostly doing drugs, along with other criminal gangs and drug dealers, but Ridley took a faint step further after becoming more powerful. He would launder money out for people and other criminal gangs out to the world, and even have them brutally murdered if they failed to pay back their loans in time. That was even... Worse than even if his victims had family members, Ridley would even have them all murdered as well. He would even have all their organs and body parts sold on the black market. Ron read through the charges that he found and Ridley had killed hundreds of families and people who couldn't pay their loans off on time. And that was the most twisted part that Ridley purposely charged them fees so high that it was impossible for them to pay it off on one time. Ron was absolutely disgusted and angered to the files he read, which many of these families, Ridley and, and his game murder, consist of children and even infants. Ridley had no problem murdering them. He was truly a ruthless as these police files made him be. Ron had read over the files over two hours. Then he finally found a file of Ridley's date of arrest. Ridley was 24 years old when he and his gang were busted by the FBI Detective Lloyd Florence in the year 1999 for trafficking insanely huge amount of illegal drugs across the border to Mexico. Ron went through the cases and eventually found the court document laying all out the crimes Ridley had committed. Along with his sentencing, to which Ron surprised in shock, despite the horrible crimes the evil man committed, he was given only 20 years in prison without parole. Ron couldn't even understand how Ridley got such an intent of sentencing, but if he had to guess, it was probably because due to his evil connections with the criminal underworld, 
Ridley probably had a ton of corrupt lawyers and a corrupt high-ranking off officials on his side to help him get his sentencing reduced. Ron knew that if Ridley wasn't pow as powerful as he was, he would have most likely got the death penalty or life in prison due to the severity of his crimes. After all, this was a man who supposedly had informers all around the globe along with other criminal alliances supporting them. So it wasn't that much difference to surprise to Ron that they try and bail Ridley out. There was nothing else on Ridley afterwards, words, although there were still many other things about Black Shadow Ron didn't understand. Ridley court cases given on full details of his confession, being about the organization when it had first been formed, and Gemini also provided some details about Ridley and Black Shadow as well. Yet Ron still wasn't sure when it was that they started becoming the most powerful, as they had first informed, but they currently were. Was it possible that Black Shadow was already as powerful and were now around 10 years ago? Or did Ridley possibly get out of prison somehow and try to gain more power? There were so many questions about Black Shadow that Ron had no answers to. And in fact, the organization was practically ghosted from the public, which made Ron anxious and even more nervous than before. How would global justice be able to catch such a powerful criminal if Ridley was truly powerful? As Gemini as he was? Ron knew that Ridley and Black Shadow needed to be stopped, but he didn't know how, and this made him feel very powerless. Black Shadow had already been proven to be powerful and dangerous as they were, bombing Japan with a nuclear missile, and Ron feared that they may do it again at any time. He had been thinking a lot about it, and Ron began to suspect that Black Shadow had known about the Yamadochi Ninja School, and he had bombed Japan to destroy it. Ron wasn't so sure why Black Shadow chose to, the nuclear weapons to do it, but he guessed maybe it was because of done to show how powerful the Black Shadow really was, and that they weren't an organization to be messed with. That was any logical conclusion Ron could come up with. Once he finished reading everything regarding Ridley and his organization, he shut off his laptop and just stared at the ceiling. Lost in thought, Ron's mind was a mix of sorrow, confusion, stress, and fear. What do we do now? Ron fought, not knowing what to do. In just eight days, things had only got worse for Kim and Ron. Duff and Dementor were dead. Japan was bombed and wiped out the entire Yamadochi Ninja School, killed millions. And then Ron had been knocked out, then left unconscious in the hospital for five days due to his injuries that he received from Wade at the fighter craft after the Red Rage took control of his mind. This was a serious issue Ron knew that he needed to have it dealt with. And while he did manage to shut Apollyon's voice out of his head for now, Ron was still pretty sure he tried to manipulate him into trying to use the Red Rage again. After all, this was very every demon who created the Red Rage, an energy source not so long ago. After striking a deal with an evil cult, Ron remembered what Apollyon had said about the two of them being bound to fate since he had tapped into the Red Rage. I can't harm the user but I can still make them go and if they resist my influence enough, Apollyon had said. That warning made Ron even more eager to find a way to break the bond between him and the demon within his mind. The last thing he ever wanted in his mind was being constantly manipulated and possibly even controlled by this evil being. Although Apollyon had clearly said that he wouldn't harm a person who possessed in the Red Rage, Ron wasn't so convinced at all what Apollyon was being honest. After all, he was a demon who created the Red Rage in Yono, so there was no way Ron was going to take Apollyon's word for it. Apollyon is definitely to be feared. If he decides to go at some point, I'm a threat to him. He may as well do something to harm me, Ron fought fearfully. He was at a loss for words to do at this point, and while this info he had provided him with more history on Ridley's youth and why he had ended up becoming the monster he was now, it still provided him no answers to where the location of the Black Shadow hideouts are, or did it bring Ron any closer to find Ridley himself. If anything, all this info was did to increase Ron's frustration in another ever negative emotions. He wanted nothing more than to make Ridley pay for his horrible crimes he had did. Ridley was truly a monster, and even though he hadn't stared out that way, it was because he became at the end. Ridley's gotta be stopped. But how? Ron fought. His mind was at a loss for answers. 
He wondered about what happened on the days when he was out cold at the hospital. Had the Black Shadow attacked again? Did Global Justice find anything on them? Ron planned to ask Kim about it later on, but at that moment, he wanted to do was relax, and some of the painkillers Ron had been given were wearing off slowly. His bandaged wounds were beginning to sting and throb painfully again, but as Ron lay back on his bed, his communicator began buzzing. He picked it up and saw it was Kim who was calling him, so he quickly answered it. Hey KP, what's going on? Ron asked. I just wanted to know how you were doing, Kim replied. I take it you saw the files on Ridley? Yes, I did, Ron replied with a grim look. Every single one of them. Kim nodded with an equally gr looked grim and said, I never thought Ridley's past was so dark and messed up as the files mentioned. Despite becoming what he is now, I can't help but feel a bit sorry for him. Kim, you shouldn't sympathize on Ridley so easy, Ron warned her with a rather aggressive manner. This is a very evil man, KP. This man committed hundreds of unspeakable evil crimes in the past. And don't forget that he's destroyed half of Japan, killed Sensei and Yori, and the entire Yamanoji ninja clan. Ridley doesn't deserve pity of any sorts, no matter how horrible his childhood was. Kim could see the hate in Ron's eyes and knew what he was implying. I know, Ron, she said calmly. What really did was unforgivable. But if you think about it, he probably became what he is today because of the way he was raised. His father was a cold-hearted, dead, ruthless criminal who basically used Ridley as a tool for his own needs. And all that abuse that he inflicted on his own son mostly played a big factor in him becoming a monster he is now. I know that, Kim, Ron shot back coldly. But that doesn't excuse Ridley for what he's done. I understand that some people who live their childhood being abused and tortured by their own parents sometimes changes them into become monsters themselves. But that's not the case with every single person that goes through. And what they do in their futures is a choice. And Ridley chose the path he's on now. He had always never had a, had a choice, Kim. And he chose to become the heartless criminal. Ridley chose to be a murderer, steal, manipulate swindle and destroy that monster does not deserve any forgiveness whatsoever ron i understand that you're angry and i know ridley doesn't deserve forgiveness kim began angry kim you can't possibly understand how i feel right now ron suddenly snapped then he yanked his shirt up look at me i've been injured due to the fact that i've been subdued because of some evil energy force messed up with my head Yori and Sensei are dead, and now some of the evil demons trying to manipulate my emotions and mind. I don't know what to do. Kim, all of this has become too much for me to handle. Kim noticed that the tears were now visible on Ron's eyes as he dropped his shirt and felt a deep sense of pity upon him. Reflecting on everything that had just happened to him several days ago, Ron had lost Yori and Sensei, and his mind was beginning to be manipulated by the red rage. He ended up losing control of his sanity and attacked Wade because of it. Kim couldn't imagine how much emotional and physical pain he was currently going through as a result of it all. Ron, you'll get through this. We all will, Kim soothed in his calm voice. Believe me when I tell you what happened in Japan hit me, hit you just as hard. Yori and Sensei were both very good friends of yours. Losing them was horrible for me as well. And as for that evil energy source inside you, I'll do whatever I can to help you fight its influence. I love you, Ron, and don't even want any of your friends to fall into the pits of depression and sadness. Ron wiped the tears from his face and nodded. Hearing Kim tell him that, that she loved him always lifted his spirit, even then through the toughest times of his life. He remembered the Laudorian invasion two years ago, how he almost lost Kim to Warlock and Wamonga. That was the first time Ron had truly been terrified. The thought of losing Kim was the one thing Ron had always feared. And when he was faced with the possibility of never seeing her again, he was struck with fear that he had never known before. Ron and Kim were always inspirable since they had always met as kids, and their bond had only grown stronger over time. Eventually, the two fell in love and became closer than ever. The thought of never being able to see Kim alive again and to feel her again terrified Ron more than anything. This was the reason he, he killed Warlock of Wamonga two years ago with the use of his mystical monkey powers. While Ron's intention wasn't to kill them, he still wanted them gone as far away from Earth as possible to ensure they never try and hurt, harm Kim or those he loved again. 
After the invasion had ended, Ron hoped that he would never have to deal with a threat like that again. But fate had other plans. Ron never even thought that he and Kim would end up dealing with a criminal organization so powerful and yet so well hidden two years later. That thing made Black Shadow hor so horrifying to Ron was that they were hidden from the entire world, presumably for a long gone years ago, and there was no doubt in his mind that this Black Shadow was very much alive and more powerful than ever. What just happened to Japan proved to be more than they though. Kim, Ron started, I... I don't want to lose you. That's the one thing that's always been in my mind ever since this case with the Black Shadow began. Ridley, he's much worse than the Lodorians. We don't know where he is or where he will strike next. He's an insane man, Kim, and if Ridley was insane enough to launch a nuclear missile at Japan, who knows what he'll do next. What if, what if he chooses the same day thing to Middleton next? I'm afraid too, Ron, Kim admitted. Out of all the villains we have dealt with in the past, Ridley is far more different from them. He's more evil, sinister, and psychotic more than anything of them combined. There is no doubt that his abusive childhood play a part of him becoming the most evil man he is now. But I don't understand of all of his intentions for what he is doing. I don't know whatever it's because Ridley wants to control the world or just to strike into their others. I've been thinking a lot about that myself. And I have a few furies on why he's doing this all, but I can't be sure if I'm right about it or not. Ron speculated. What are your furies? Kim asked curiously. Well, Ridley clearly knows everything about us, our families, friends, associates like that metal suit freak in the train yards. He bombed Japan confidently where Yamanochi Ninja School is located. I'm beginning to think that Ridley was either some sort of grudge against Team Possible and wants us dead for that reason, or he's trying to eliminate people that sees his threats to his plans. The Yamanochi Ninja Clan has a powerful organization that had a lot of connections, and I think that's why Ridley wiped them out. If my theory is correct, Ridley's trying to wipe out any group organization that he fears to oppose him that he could take over the world, Ron explained.